Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 422. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, hey, everybody. I pray that you're all staying warm. We are having a little tundra event here. Yeah, we, we've been invaded by Canada. Oh, my goodness. It has been so cold, um, unseasonably cold. And so we are so thankful God's kept, you know, the heat on. We've not had any problems with with any of our buildings, with our homes. And uh, we have sure been praying for all our partners. I know one of our partners, um, Steph, got an email. They had 25 inches of of snow. We've been praying for them. We've been praying for others in Illinois that... Um, they were having events with electricity going out. So we have, have really been keeping everybody in prayer and thanking God that he just He makes a way for us to make it. I remember right. when um, our kids were really young, uh, we were in renting a big house, and so we, we all had to get just wall everything off and stay in the living room where there was a, um, a wood furnace that we had asked the landlord if we could put in. Or a wood stove. Wood stove, I mean. And um, and so we had to kind of stay in there because that's where it was warm. <laughs> and so we know what it's like to to have to struggle through some cold weather and things. But um, I want to thank all our listeners for their encouragement. We just received such sweet cards, and we, we appreciate it so much. Um, you know, I was, I was trying to do some research during these times when uh, we've been home more, and... Um, I heard a, an interview with this man called Dr. Selwyn Stevens. He's written a book called Unmasking Freemasonry. And uh, he actually is the first one I've ever heard that has confirmed what I've believed all these years, that Freemason descendants are attacked physically based on the oaths that were made by their ancestors. And he said that they had a counselor's um, with this huge ministry in, in Australia, he said, where there's more Freemasons per capita than anywhere else in the world. And so the counselors started having um, all the counselees fill out forms, and so they, they knew if they were Freemason descendants, and they, they knew what um, all of the infirmity that they'd been suffering from, sicknesses and um, different things that had gone on. And what they found out was that the Freemason descendants' physical problems were directly related to the, those oaths taken by their Masonic yeah, he ancestors. Could, he could literally tell, okay, if you're having these problems, these were the degrees that, uh, the, as, as high up as they went, mm-hmm. and uh, which, is, which is a phenomenal discovery. And so uh, we've ordered those books. That's just more good information where we could show a Freemason or their descendants how Satan operates with this, that there are curses, that, that he uses it in every opportunity he has. And I believe that, that once they could see that, their faith would rise to break those things and, and believe for restoration and healing. In fact, uh, I think I ordered like 11 of his books. Not only did he have the one on Freemasonry, he probably addresses the other. They have one on a manual for healing. Uh-huh. And I, I bet you they cover a lot of that in there. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what all's in there. But I was I know God just directed us there because I've really not had anything I could point to other than my research and, and all of the Freemasons that I knew and how their families had been affected. So this is this is some great information to have. Um another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, it's so neat how how God does things, because I, I got an email from a dear friend uh, in another state, one of our partners, and she uh, had watched the Give Him 15 by Dutch Sheets that morning, and when we had watched it that same morning, uh, and I think it was just timing, because I'd not listened to several of his Give Him 15, I'd just been researching other things, and this was uh, about a dream that someone had that was given a warning about... Uh, protection for America's waterways. And it was um, primarily concerning the water supply 
And, you know, that's one of the things I've been concerned about for a long time is that terrorists would try to to do something to a water supply in a big city to affect as many people as they could. Then the waterways, um, you know, concerning supply issues and transportation and things like that, and then the dams. Um, and so if you're interested in one of the best prayers I've ever seen uh, is on the Give Him 15 website. If you just go there, you can click on that and go down that prayer. It's just absolutely wonderful. And they, they do exactly what I love, is they, they put in, they quote the scripture uh, and give you the, the place in the scriptures where it is, where you can stand on those verses. And I think this could be modified to any nation. You just have to switch a few things around, but you could modify this to your nation because they won't just do that here in America. They're going to be trying to, you know, the, the bigger picture is Satan will coordinate to try to do as much harm as he can in any nation to take over. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, so, think is, I think it'll really be big in, in the Western world, whether it's Canada, the U.S., or anywhere in Europe. I think it's the same plan. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and yeah. I did look because I, before I said that I was going to see, you know, I've never been to um, the UK, and I was seeing that you know how much of their electricity comes from hydroelectricity using the the dam, and they, I think it was like thirty to forty percent, and so that's a, a huge amount. It and is. so these are things that you can pray, and we'll be praying. Well, you can you can also look strategically. Let's say at the Mississippi. You know, there's just really maybe a dozen bridges probably that, that cross that for the whole uh, width of the United States. And if you took out a good portion of those bridges, you have absolutely disrupted uh, the, the food supply uh, chain. Well, they, you hadn't looked at this prayer yet, and it actually points out the Mississippi River. Yeah. And they pray about that. But you, but you could easily modify this for, for any nation. And the only thing that I wanted to add that we can all pray together about um, is asking forgiveness for the sins of all those involved in this. Because now, you know, Hamas, we know that they've got, got uh, groups here that's already been detected by our intelligence agencies. And, and many other groups. Satan won't just take that group. Now, they may not know they're working together, but what he'll do is if they're going to attack waterways, he will have groups of druids doing rituals to invoke water spirits to work in tandem with other groups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, anything in the occult, because that we saw that when they were coming after us. Groups that I think fought each other came together in a concerted effort. They'll come. To, Satan just uses them, and and so we just ask God to forgive every sin that has been done to empower water spirits or empower groups um, to come against these these waterways. And Father, we just ask that that uh, as we ask forgiveness, that that power would be broken, that you would send your holy angels and disperse their gatherings, make it impossible for them to get anything like this done. Uh, and we just know, Father, that, that you're sending angels to roadblock, and we're so grateful for for the people that and their gifts, how they're being shown so we can all pray. I thank yes. you. I mean, this these are detailed dreams that these people have. God's used it mightily. I mean, my dreams are never that detailed. I've had a few that I thought were, were prophetic dreams. Uh, but, man, they just have detailed dreams. So, uh, that it, to me, it just shows God's power to reveal the hidden things. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think we're going to need it in the days ahead. Um, you know, the, I remember, I think it was Elijah. I think it was Elijah or Elisha. I can't remember which one, but um, off the top of my head. But when when the, the, there was an enemy king that when he would whisper plans in his bedchamber, the prophet would know and would and would proclaim them. I, I think we're going to see things like that in the days ahead. The, the, I think we're going to see an acceleration of the giftings and anointings for those that have taken the time to purify themselves, which is what we're going to be talking about today, that we're going to see a, a, an acceleration and an amplification of the anointings and the gifts they have. Uh, I know years ago, God told me that one day, he said, right now, you know, uh, Messianic, people, Messianic believers are treated like second-head citizens in Israel. 
And this was back in the 90s. God told me one day he's going to loose the prophetic in, in the body in Israel, and they're going to become the crown jewels of Israel because all of a sudden the intelligence community says, you're knowing things before we even get a wisp of it. And all of a sudden, those that have a track record of accuracy, uh, I think it may even open up the, the door for some of the intelligence community to find uh, Jesus as Messiah. I believe that. Well, I know that back in years ago when God was showing me the you know panoramic vision of everything that was going to happen with judgment coming, uh, I saw a huge damn break. Uh, and it just it just started at one end and, and came open like it was opening a, a can. It was an odd way. It it wouldn't have been the way that I thought it would have done. You know, I would have just thought like maybe it had crushed in the middle and... and just it, collapsed. But it, it was an odd thing. And so I've been praying about that, that for years. Um, but it's just, it's... It's an exciting time. I know these are perilous times, and I know people are concerned on so many levels, but the same, at the same time, this is when the body of Christ will rise up and shine. And uh, as I was praying this week, God was telling me about, you know, the preparation and the events that happened in Esther's life. We're going to see a similar thing with the body of Christ. Yes. And... Um, you know, she had to go through a preparation time before she could even go before the king. And it said in uh, Esther 2, verse 12, it says, Now when every maid's turn was come to go up to King ah- Ahasuerus, I hope I said that right, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished. She went six months with oil and myrrh, six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. And, you know, there's probably a, a sermon right there, just the... Uh, Purification of the bride. Well, and, and, the, all those, and, and all what was others. used, because yeah. I think there's there's something specific with myrrh, and I just think that those could, uh, they would apply to something that's going on today. You know, because if you, it doesn't take <laughs> you long. Uh, we watched a, a sermon by a, a, a dear black brother yesterday, and he was showing some of the videos of, of what was being done. And I, I hadn't seen some of this stuff, and I thought, oh, my word. Um, yeah, and it, the, the video is called A Falling Away. And I guess he was big in, in hip-hop and, and music and stuff before he got saved. And, and so now, I mean, he's, he's a pastor that there's a lot of the people in the, in, the, in the music community are coming back to him and saying, what am I going to do? They're wanting me to do this. They're wanting me to do that. You don't realize that when you're in the music industry, it, it is very occult controlled. And you have handlers that say, you're going to do your contract and we pick the songs. We pick, we pick the videos. We pick how we do these things. And a lot of them are saying, you know, I, I can't do this. I don't want to do this, but I, but I signed the contract. And he said, I told you not to. And he said, Paul went to jail for his faith. And so if they sue you, they sue you. But you, you, you have to make a, a, a line of demarcation of I will not cross this line. And I think that uh, as believers, the world will promise you anything to get a hold of your gifts. Satan cannot. And this, this is why what Mary is going to be sharing here in a minute is so important. Satan cannot give you gifts. Only God can. He can only steal them and pervert them and use them for his purposes. And he does. And he does. You know, I was thinking one time years ago when I um, we watched a movie. What was the name of that movie that Whoopi Goldberg was in and she was a, went and pretended she was a nun? What was that uh, called? What was that called? Sister Act. Yes. And I remember when she was singing in that, I thought there's an anointing on her voice. And so look at what Satan did. He's now got her on a, a talk show all over the place and using her voice to proclaim what the enemy wants. Yeah. And, you know, with, with, that, with that show, The View, any time that they, they're for anything, I'm almost automatically against it. I mean, it's, well, this, I mean, it's, it's, it's so left-leaning. It, it, that's it what funny. it is. I mean, it's just, um, but, I, you know, I've prayed for her through the years. As I've thought about that, I've thought, you know, what a, a gift 
that God's placed on her voice. And boy, the the enemy just knows to, to he knows what to do. He knows how to trap people. And so, but the good news is, is I think God's going to be taking us through a process. Uh, I think we're in it. I think we're in a process where God's just going to start revealing other things. Um, I was, you know, we've been praying about God reveal things. If 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 I can't figure out what's going on, show me something. And one of the people that was um, taking pictures down when we had uh, we lived in Dixon, and we had that little storefront, and people were coming and telling us things about the occult. And there was this woman that I knew well. Um, that was sitting across the road, and she was turned around, and she was taking a picture of every person that walked in our in our building. And I thought, well, there's somebody either controlled or they're a split person, and they don't. But I mean, it was obvious. That was an obvious one. And God reminded me because um, I've told before our youngest daughter is is in a lesbian relationship, and I remember her at at some event we were at. She came up to our youngest daughter. And started singing this song to her about I can make a rainbow. And she went down the colors. And I thought, hmm. So I started asking forgiveness for the sins. And yes. I've started breaking anything because that may have been one of those initial things that Satan used. You know, because we're, we were in a mind control setting. They knew how to control people. They knew how to maneuver. They knew how to set this whole place up to where drugs could go through and nobody would know it. and I mean, it was a known fact, but nobody sure knew what to do about it. Um, and so I thought about that, and I thought that's the kind of thing that God's getting ready to do so the prodigals can come home. He's going to go down to the very specific instance in every situation that's held people bondage, and he's going to say, go to that place right there. Go to that place right there, and that's going to break it all open. Yes. Um, because obviously that person was connected to the occult in some way. So just to give you guys some encouragement, God can reveal whatever needs to be revealed, um, and, and there's timing in it. There's timing with what, what he'll do. And so I want, I want to go back here to Esther. Uh, and, you know, once she was queen, once she was selected, then God was orchestrating the whole situation to overthrow the plot of Haman, which yes. was the extermination of God's people. Yeah, and you know, uh, Haman is a type and shadow in the Old Testament of the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you when it's you look going at that on story, in Nazi Germany, no doubt, absolutely. <laughs> that same well, well, you know, when you when you when you take that temple and put it put it over it, the preparation of the bride was paramount to overturning the plans of the Antichrist. Now, will that not preach for where we're headed right now? That, that's why this is the year of taking your walk with God seriously. This is the year of purification. This is the year of so many things. And it's not going to go without resistance from the enemy. But at the same time, and I think we shared this in the last, in the last podcast, anything that might be uh, impeding your spiritual walk, God is going to show you this year. And he can do it the easy way, or he can do it the hard way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I vote I vote for the easy way. I do too. Um, what what I believe we're in in the beginning stages of is the bride being cleansed. Yes. And so this this is that's I think that's why God was talking to me about Esther and this purification process. And I've thought about that before. Um, you know, we're going to have to go through. A process because the church has got spots and wrinkles and is not ready <laughs> to to show forth the glory of God. And I had a vision years ago, and I've, I shared that in my book. And it was where I was taken in this vision, and there was this woman there. And um, it was... I couldn't see Jesus, but I, I knew he was, he was there with me. And so I was watching this woman, and I was just, I was just in, uh, astounded at the beauty of this woman. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody that could have compared to what she looked like, and she was adorned. And, um, and then I watched as 
demons came and presented her with the results of abortions. And I won't go any further than that, but um, she turned and looked at me, and, and her eyes were just all black, and it was just the most horrid evil I've ever felt. And so there was, a, there was an entity that was in a mist that came up and said, uh, why did you bring her here? And I heard the voice of Jesus say, because she has a right to know what she's fighting. And then that entity said, if you ever bring her here again, and Jesus said, you'll what? And the whole place shook like nothing you've ever experienced. And so then I was back, and I thought, oh, man, this is what I'm fighting. <laughs> this is, And so um, what I was thinking about is, you know, right now, the church as a whole, we're in a mess. We're in such a mess, guys. Oh, the more I see, the more I hear, the more I grieve. But the truth is, is we're going to go through a process, and we're going to get cleansed. We're going to get purified. And then, let me tell you, when the bride is purified, she's going to have on shoes of peace. Yes. And every place she steps, it's going to sound like thunder to the enemy. And she's going to step, and she's going to step, and it's going to back off the enemy. And this is, this is what it's going to do. Because of the great contrast, like I could see it as the bride was just full of God's light, its glory. Um, the whore of Babylon turned, uh, I could see it this week as I was studying this, uh, the whore of Babylon <clears throat> turned into what she really looks like. Not that, that woman I saw that just people would be mesmerized by. It, you're going to see what she really looks like. So as we are sanctified, as we continue in this process, the bride is going to show who she is. And then you're going to have people be aghast. You're going to have Christians be aghast at what the connections the connections are going to be made. All these things are going to be revealed about what's really running the country and what's, what's going on. And many will turn and join and be, be purified. But there's still going to be some people... In the ugliness of the horror Babylon, in the it, it's horrific ugly. It's like nothing you've ever seen ugly. When they see that, they're still going to follow it yeah. because of the power and the and and the seduction. It's it's very powerful. And what what um, what can defeat it though is the bride. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking back on those videos that that pastor showed about six or seven minutes of clips not only from things that were in shows purportedly done by believers, but what was going on in the worship services. And I mean, scantily dressed, talking about things that were completely inappropriate. It's like this, you, you could think about maybe that being done at a rock and roll concert or something, but not on a platform of a church. And I was reminded of David Wilkerson in his book, The Vision, talked about all these things. Now, they're... I mean, they were very scantily dressed, but he said eventually it, it will progress to the place that there will be they'll, they'll be dancing nude in front of the church and thinking that they're doing things for God. That's that is the we're, we're very close. To we're that. we're very close to these things, and guys, it, it, we we cannot respond when we we share things like this, like the church did back in the eighties when David Wilkerson was sharing these things. They loved his story about how Nikki Cruz got saved and all the different things. He started bringing these things up and saying, listen, he started reading their mail and saying, you, you see the, the seeds of it now, but this is where it's going to take us. Mary, there were major ministries that said, we will not let you preach this stuff in our pulpits. And I mean, you want to talk about accurate. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. And and thank God, the other day we were watching a video, and I guess it's one of his sons in the faith that was raised in his ministry that's now pastoring out there and shares a similar anointing. And I mean, calling people to repentance and calling people to do different things. Uh, we cannot let the enemy say, oh, I've heard all this stuff before. And it's not, we're, there, there is so much happening right now that fulfills Bible prophecy or sets up 
is setting up when we, we look at what technocracy is doing worldwide. And right now, China, you know, originally Nazi Germany was the template and it was put into a socialist uh, regime. But now China is the template for complete control of every man, woman, and child on the planet. And a lot of our government is involved with it just as much as anybody else, as well as all the tech industries. Can you, can you imagine? Well, it's, it's like we saw with, with the jab. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies got behind it because they made billions of dollars. Every, you know, everybody must take this. Okay, there's a chip. Everybody must take this. There's, there's, there's this surveillance. Everybody must do this. Otherwise, you can't buy or sell. You cannot be a part of society. I mean, they're, they're funneling us to where uh, we've even had members of Congress and the intelligence community said there's going to come a day that there will be absolutely no privacy to include what you think to yourself. And I, I have read reports with Mary, they have machines that they can put on your head and they can actually see a visualization of what you're thinking. That's, that's how close to complete control. And yeah. that, that is all. That, 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 the, the horror of Babylon in the book of Revelation sold the souls of men. They sold humans. They sold everything. That the human race is nothing more than a commodity for the whore of Babylon. Well, let me read Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and the wife has made herself ready. Oh, that is a pivotal place in the Word of God She's right going to be ready. Yes. And all of hell can't stop it. Uh, guys, I mean, the Bible says, as in the days of Noah... God preserved Noah and his sons during the reign of the watchers. That's right. And the Nephilim. And they're back. <laughs> and they're back. If he could preserve them, yeah, he can, preserve, he can preserve, us. preserve us. He sure can. You know, before that verse in the book of Revelation, we see God's people. The Bible says more than you can count, more than innumerable saints that have come out of great tribulation whose robes are washed white. That's right. The devil cannot stop the preparation of the bride if the bride would get her act together. No. Well, he's, he's had this plan that I, I'm sure that, you know, the kingdom of darkness said, hey, we got him. We got him. There ain't no way that they're going to be. But you know what? <laughs> I was in such a mess. Oh, my word. Both of us. I was in such a mess. Yeah. And I, I was like a, I was a perfect example of a, of a bad wife. I was, you know, I, I was trying, but I mean, I had so much demonic attachments and all that stuff. I was a bad wife. And so if oh, God could, yeah, could well. take me through a process and get me to where, where I can be where I'm supposed to be. I, and I still consider myself in the process. Let me tell you, cause, cause I was a, the biggest mess. Um, but God can raise us up out of a pit. He brought me out of a pit that looked impossible. Yeah. You know, how do you pray and get yourself out of something and, and you don't even know what you've been put in? <laughs> you know, and we, we, you know, we look back in, in that time and, you know, you said you were a bad wife. Well, I wasn't a dismal husband. I mean, I had, I had no example. I was emotionally shut down. And God worked on both of us. And, you know, are we there yet? We're still in a process. Yeah. I mean, you and I sure. are still are still working out things. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I feel so inept to, to try to talk to other people. I just pray that God can use maybe our testimony to encourage them. Well, the, the truth is everybody's in a process. Nobody has arrived. At least we're, we're open to God correcting and, and, and to change us and, and to do the work. And, guys, that, that's where all of us are. Any minister, anybody that says we have arrived, this this is the perfect example, are lying to you. One, well, I think one of the things that ministry is not showbiz. Showbiz puts on a mask, okay, and a lot of that has spilt over into ministry. You and you, you kind of also see it with the with the old faith movement that everything had to be positive. That that if you actually told the people what was going on, that was called a negative confession. Mm-hmm. And so you put on a facade and you called it faith. Whereas I see, uh, you know, reading back in, from Lester Summerall on, on back, <coughs> the, the saints were very honest with where they were. 
and they would tell people where they were, but they also dealt with their issues. And I, I think somehow or another we have we have made ministry into some type of Hollywood that everything has to be perfect. You know, and I've, I've had people sometimes comment when either I stutter, I, there's a lot of times I'll reach for the wrong word and, you know, try coming up with an hour show and coming up with stuff off the top of your head, especially when it's an interview. <laughs> and Hollywood has this condition that every word has been scripted. It's been psychologically analyzed. It has, And we even confuse the actors with the characters that they portray in 99% of the time in real life, they're nothing like what they portray. No. That, they, that they're putting on a show and the <clears throat> words are big, were, were thought out, psychologically analyzed, and showing the, you know, the best or whatever of it. And they're portraying something that is, it's, it's called acting. It's, it's something that you're not. And we, and we have extrapolated that over into ministry that, you know, a ministry has to be perfect, that we have to have almost like a Superman suit on that, uh, you know, you never get sick, you never have physical problems if you pray for people to be healing, all these different things. That's the opposite of what we see. I mean, there's, Paul talked about in one of his writings, uh, you know, having the thorn in the flesh, and I believe that was that, that he had revival and riot everywhere he went. But he also had uh, some problems physically from the beatings and different things he took for the preaching of the gospel, as well as eye problems. Uh, there was one letter he said, listen, uh, you, you can see I'm now taking over this part of the letter and how big my handwriting is. Well, that means somebody that probably needed, you know, bifocals in that day, but they didn't exist. Glasses didn't exist then. And yet he was praying for people and, and people were mm-hmm. being healed. The only one that was perfect was Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now we're in the process of God making us like Christ. And we are predestined to be conformed into his image. And God is saying in this day and this hour, because there has been such darkness, there has been such level of Babylon that has permeated the church because they put money with it, Mary. And I I even wonder if some of the kingmakers on on different, um, I would call questionable preachers, is because the elite are putting money in them to promote them and then make them the model. Like, if you want to be successful, this is what you've got to do. And, you know, if we're going to be successful in the kingdom, you go back to the Word of God. Yeah, he's the only one that can perfect us, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> you, you go back and you read the book of Acts, you read the New Testament, you read, you read the life of Jesus. This is, this is success. And we, we, we have got to return back to the biblical model. Mm-hmm. The bride is going, and the bride is being prepared. For those of you that don't understand our Hebraic heritage, the bride is being prepared to function in a Hebraic court because her king is a Jewish king. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to have to understand the commandments of God. You're going to have to understand these things. And guys, the commandments of God are all for our protection, for our provision, and and for our empowerment. All of them. You know, God says, when you do this, you open the door to me, and you don't open, you close the door to the devil. But when you do these other things, you open the door to the devil. Mm-hmm. And we have to take those ab- admonishments from God very, very seriously. The bride is going to be word-centric, mm-hmm. not feeling-centric, not tradition-centric. I don't care how long the tradition has been there. If it doesn't line up with the word, it's out the door. Because this bride, although she, and I, I, want, I want the bride of Christ to be wearing the most beautiful white dress, but, honey, she's wearing combat boots. Yeah, and the God of peace is soon going to crush Satan underneath our feet. As, yeah. she, as she walks, she's going to start walking through God's people. And, and I, I love what you said, and I can't remember if you already said it, you mentioned it beforehand, that, that when she walks, the peace is going to flow, but it's going to sound like thunder. Yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah. Thunder to the enemy. Well, I believe it. And, uh, you know, I look back on, on our life, and when God started healing me, I had to come to grips with the things that I'd done wrong in our marriage. You know, I wasn't I wasn't ever un, unfaithful, um, but I my mind was a mess, and and I was unfaithful in my mind, and I also just I just wasn't going to let any man tell me what to do. Yeah. You know, I I grew up um, watching my mom just be so pressed down by my dad. I 
I sure didn't feel safe. I didn't know why I didn't feel safe, but I didn't ever f- feel safe. And so when you don't feel safe, um, you you just put up walls and shields, and you're not going to let anybody tell you what to do. Well, that doesn't work so well in a godly marriage. You know, there's a, there's headship there with the husband. And now this is this is um, one of those things where it's two ways. You know, you have to have a, a godly man that's following the commandments and is is yeah. free from his bondages. But I mean, I really had to work. Well, each of our bondages fed and reinforced the other ones. Yeah. And and I had to work against a Jezebel spirit. I mean, it was it was huge. I was entangled with it, and um, you know, God was just taking me step by step and showing me things I need to repent of. And then He'd show me something else, and He was so faithful and so gentle with me. You know, I, if I look back on the way I was, I think if I was God, I'd have just kind of grabbed me by the shirt collar and shook me and said, "Step out of it." <laughs> but He was so gentle and. And so merciful to me and, and to show me. And then, you know, we had we both had to start working on things to get to get things to where we could have a godly marriage. Yeah. And get things in order and get things to where um we we put our trust in God. We both had a lot of reason to not trust anybody. Yeah. And so you have it it takes some time. It takes practice. And you know, I, I even look back on that not only of, of personal things to work on, but I was a typical charismatic educator, and I had all the tools for deep research. I just didn't do it. I was just regurgitating everything everybody had had ever taught. And when um, I think one of the neatest things that happened is after God set you free and you started hearing from God, I would give you the stat, the the pat dispensationalist charismatic answer and you weren't buying it you're saying no you're gonna have to show me in the word and i had to go back and begin digging myself and what it what is amazing you know not only were we you know you know messed up emotional of other things but our we we had and this this goes across the whole body of christ we have very shallow theology that does not dig deep into the Word of God to be able to connect all the dots. And ever since then... It's been by design. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been by design. There, had, there has been a weakening and watering mm-hmm. down. Uh, when I want to get deep, I'll, I'll go back into the 18th and 19th century. Uh, they, they, they had a, a, a greater appreciation, and a lot of the newer stuff I call is nothing more than candy store. You know, it's just candy in a candy store. And so when I, and I mean, you can testify to this, that I would come back and I would be aghast. It's like, how in the world did they come up with this when, you're actually, when, you, start, when you start actually exegeting Scripture and, and looking at the historical context and the, the original language? How in the world did they ever come up? Well, it was very convenient. And, a lot of, and sometimes the, the, the pet doctrines are based upon the reading of, of the King James Bible in a modern world in which even the definitions of the words have changed over the, over the centuries. And, uh, man, I, I love the original language. And, and I see the, the bride is going to go down to the foundation of anything and in the purification process. She's going to dig deep to get Babylon out of her. She's also going to dig deep to get the kingdom in her. And the kingdom in her has to go just as deep, if not deeper, than Babylon was in her. And I, I think that I think that's a real part of the of the, mm-hmm. the, the process. Uh, that's why there's uh, you have six months of one thing and then you know, the first six months and when I when I was thinking about the purification of, of Esther, I was thinking about the Israelites after they were freed from Egypt and before they met God on Mount Sinai. And this is where we get the concept of baptism from. They went in mikvah for three days before they met with God. When they, because God said, I don't want the smell of Egypt on you. I don't want you smelling like a slave. I don't want you smelling like you lived in Egypt. I want you clean and fresh, if you mm-hmm. will, when you meet with me. And that three days was like the preparation of the bride, the preparation of Esther, that they had to make sure that everything that they owned, everything that they had, that even the very dust of Egypt was no longer on them. And guys, that's the task for this hour. 
for the bride, for his wife to have made herself ready. I mean, that's, that, that, that's a big thing. In the Jewish culture, we, we read in uh, the very last letter uh, in Revelation of the, of the of seven letters, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. Now, we've used that for salvation, but it's actually, when you set it back into its Canaanite setting, he begins the patrol process that if we went back and we were living in the Second Temple period and Mary and I were in a Canaanite community and we had fallen in love, I and my father would go to her house and we would knock on the door. Her and her dad would be on the other side of the door and, he's, and you know, her dad would look at her and say, you sure you want me to let this guy in? You know, And we would come in and, I, and it's like we share in the word, in my, in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so. I was, I was, you see, that's all the part of the, the, the one who wants to be the bridegroom says, here's all the preparation that I have done. Now we get all excited about that. Here's all the preparation I have done. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come and you're going to be with me. This is my, this is my, this is my family business. I'm the king. This is, I, I, am, I am going to be Messiah ben David. I'm going to come and I'm going to rule with a, with a rod of iron when I, when I come back. And we get all excited about that, but we forget the other side of the coin. That then her family turns to the father and to the, the son and says, what does she need to change and what does she need to learn to bring her up to where she can stand with you as your wife? And so while he's away building a place for her, she is learning what she needs to do, changing everything in her life to come in line with the bridegroom so that when he returns, that she can stand with him in whatever his vocation is and be a true helpmeet to him. You see, we're going to rule and reign with Christ one day. Yeah, and it's it's going to have to follow the pattern that he established. You can't walk like an Egyptian and yeah, and right. serve him. You can't right. you 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 can't you can't smell like Babylon. You can't yeah. you you can't compromise for money. You can't compromise for affluence in the world. You you can't compromise. The world hated him. They're going to hate us. And I I think it is going to get worse. As, as, the, as the end times comes there. But at the same time, we know that those that walk with him are going to make it through and they're going to be purified and their robes are going to be dressed in white. Well, and we can see, look at the difference in our marriage. You know, the, the more we pray, that, and, and to this day, the most powerful anointing I've sensed is when we pray in agreement. Yes. And we come into agreement. Every once in a while, you know, we'll, we'll start feeling this this oppression just Yuck. stuff coming in and you go what in the world and so the times when we can you know, i mean it backs off immediately when we come together and pray and and that's what we the the bride the wife is supposed to do we we are in total agreement yeah. we're in total agreement the bridegroom and the bride i, I remember years ago listening to uh and i can't remember not, i can't remember his name but he was teaching on intercessory prayer mary and he was talking about how Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. And he says, our task as intercessors is to so remove ourselves out of the equation that Jesus can pray through oh, his body. Oh, that's good. That's right. And that's see, right. that's that's the and you know what you want to talk about be you want to talk about power? When Jesus can pray through you. You are now in you are now in agreement with the King of Kings mm -hmm. and the Lord of Lords right. and the Creator. Do you think for a minute that hell can stop while you and yeah. Jesus are praying in no agreement way. with each other? No way. Oh man, I mean, we we have we have barely scratched the surface of what God can do through a people that are not only 100% committed to him, 100% clean of Babylon. But you see, Jesus is the prototype. He says, I do not do anything unless the Father tells me to do it. I do not say anything. I, it, it, and because Moses was the type and shadow, we see the fulfillment of Christ, and now we're predestined to be like him. This is the year that we're going to have to lay all of our own agendas on the altar and sacrifice them. This is the year that... Anything that we need to pray, Father, if there's anything of Babylon in us, mm -hmm. show it. Yes. Show it. 
show it and then give me Make the it tools show that I need for what it is. Not 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 the pretties, not the facades. Um, it's it's counterfeit stuff, and it's got to be made to look like what it is, so people can really see it. I, I heard I heard <clears> one minister, and we were like, we've listened to so many here, lady. But he said, twenty twenty four is going to be the year of the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that because God's going to do some great things, but He's got to show the bad and the ugly to be dealt with, so that we can get to the good. That's right, and it and you know we're preparing for that last harvest. And that's one of the things I think that uh, we're getting ready to see. We're going to see this year is it's a great opportunity as we prepare uh, to reach the lost by showing his love and and helping in any way we can. You know, sometimes before you can preach the gospel, you have to give hungry food. Yes. You have to maybe give the homeless shelter. And, And once they see acts of love, then they will be open to hearing the gospel. And that's, you know, in Ephesians 2.10, it says, we are, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And then James 2.18, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you thee my faith by my works. Yes. And so I think it's, it's, a, it's going to be a, a marvelous year as far as God getting us ready and stepping out to help because yes. there's this shaking is going to have some big results. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think we have taken the thing of salvation is not of works to the place where everybody just kind of sets on their blessed assurance and does nothing. Um, that, that's, see, that's another lie of the devil. Now, salvation is not of works. You cannot do anything to get saved except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and his completed work. But Paul was very succinct. He said, listen, we are recreated through Christ Jesus unto good works. So once you're saved, quit trying to get saved and be the saved. And we start doing the positive commandments of God. And that includes reaching out to those that are in need around us. That, that's very, very important. And uh, I know our ministry, we give uh, to several ministries. One of them is help with Ozark Food Harvest up here simply because uh, they have the connections that if I would, you know, if I could take the same money and even go to Sam's and not get a tenth of what they can get because they're getting it wholesale a lot of times beyond that. And then we see where a lot of food companies will donate a lot of extra mm-hmm. food to them. And so they're just doing a phenomenal job of, of making uh, and they supply a lot of the pantries in the area yeah. so that they can give away food. And Convoy of Hope is another one, yeah. you know, that they go to disaster areas and help and um, it's it's just time for us. You know, the truth of it is, back when I was in such a mess, <clears throat> I couldn't have thought about really helping somebody else. You know, there were certain times that I'd see something with kids or something like that and try to help. But, I mean, just as far as my day-to-day, my thoughts were mostly as how am I going to make it through this day? Yeah. <laughs> how, how am I going to make it through, you know? And and because when you're in bondage, you you look more inward you keep trying to figure out what's wrong trying to figure out how to to change something and so i think in this purification process god's going to free us from those things to where we can start really moving forward for his will to be done for souls to be saved help to be given and i think it's you know sometimes i'm telling you uh, probably not the best thing to give somebody but just as an example if you just bake some cookies and took him to somebody, you know, just 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 an act of kindness like that sometimes can open up a door like you wouldn't believe. That might be something that that person was craving that day, and they and they might start thinking, oh, I wonder if God had them bring. Them. You know, there's all kinds of things that that God can do, and and I think we're going to be more open to moving like that and moving as a group because more and more I see we're all hearing the same things. You know, the remnants hear the same things. We're, we're praying the same prayers. We're going forward. And that's encouraging to me. It is. And, you know, one of the things you'll find out about our ministry is we have a very wide berth of who we listen to uh, simply because if we hear the voice of God in what they're saying, mm-hmm. that's confirmation to us. I'm, I'm not into movement. We're, we need to get out of movement-minded because there isn't a movement that we can point to that there's not a bunch of squirrels, Okay. And but in the midst of that, there's there's some real people in 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 in, uh, in different movements that are hearing from God that have a good track record, mm-hmm. and so we we got to get we got to get out of this mindset 
of, well, I can't listen to this person because he's a part of that movement. Well, he may be something that God put in that movement to bring it back to, to center instead of out in the far left or far right or whatever. And we, we need to learn, and what was it? There was Dr. Lawrence Crabb. He said, we need to learn to chew the straw and spit out the sticks no matter who we're listening to. And I, I think that that's a sign of maturity that we can, and you and I have both heard uh, ministers that I, I really appreciate, and they're, they're, we've listened to four or five messages, really, really good. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there taking middle notes about stuff, and then they, pre- then they preach when it's like, what on earth? And God says, yeah, they're just kind of like you. You can miss it a time or two <laughs> yourself, you know. We miss it quite a few times. Yeah, we can. <laughs> but nobody's perfect but Jesus. And yeah, uh, I do I, think, though, there's going to be a purifying stream yeah. to where the truth of God's word is going to be greater than it's ever been. The teachings are going to be purified. And, and we're yeah. going to, because when, when you've got the truth of God's word, that's what Satan's fought for so long. Because if you have a group of people that know the truth of God's word and are committed to following it, then he's worried about that. <laughs> Uh, associate of mine, Ken Johnson, actually prints. Now he calls it Third Corinthians. It's actually Second Corinthians. What is Second Corinthians? Our Bible is actually Third. And to show you how this works, the anointing is on what we call First and Second Corinthians. And so I'm excited. I, I get the book. I thought, I'm going I'm to because this was like an, a miss, missing epistle by the Apostle Paul. I could tell by the writing style it was Paul. Absolutely no anointing. Absolutely no anointing. He might as well have been giving him a laundry list. And, and, you know, at, at first it kind of popped my bubble about the Apostle Paul, and God started working on me. He said, I didn't anoint him to write an epistle when he wrote that one to be shared to the body of Christ throughout history. And so it was for that, it was for that situation for those people, but there was a different level of anointing and divine revelation mm-hmm. that was on what God, God predestined. These are going to be the books of the Bible. These are the ones that are, that are there. And... It, it showed me that any any minister can miss it sometimes, or or God does it. It's it, 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 I've even uh, years ago I heard um, Bob Mumford talk about this, and he said, "Listen," he said, "just because God shows you something that you can apply personally, and maybe even apply to a situation a small group, does not make it a doctrine that you need to preach widely." Because it may be something that God is correcting there and that anointing is going to be there. He said, we have got to mature to the place where we can differentiate when God's dealing with me. Mm -hmm. God's dealing with a small situation that I do not need to broadcast out. And and then the ones that God gives me for the whole body, I need to know that that is that that, and it's separate from this. And that's that's something that I don't think we've been taught a lot either. No, we haven't. You know, on those, those kind of things. But we're learning. We're all learning. And God's showing us new things that, that we need to, to work on, and we're going to get there. We're and, <laughs> and one of the things, and I'm, I'm actually making notes for two of the books I'm working on right now because the anointing's here. But in this purification process, we, we dealt with there's going to be not only purification, amplification, but Mary, I believe there's also going to be acceleration. Mm. God needs you in a certain place with him in 2024 and beyond. If we'll yield, God will get you to where you need to be. Even though the devil may have had you in neutral for, for a decade, it doesn't matter. God, I remember when, when Mary got set free, I mean, she was like a sponge. She was, she was listening to all that. She was learning her authority and all these things. And, and it's like I saw her in, in nine months grow as much as I've seen Christians grow in four or five years. Because God was saying, I've got a plan, I've got a purpose, you're now free. I mean, for the first time, you could read the Word. Well, I was spiritually starved. Yes. I sure wasn't physically starved, but I was spiritually starved. And, spiritually, and so, you were like a teenager in front of a well, refrigerator. Well, that's what the bondage was doing, is it, it just made it impossible yeah. for me to study. Or, um, oh, there was no such thing as meditating on the Word of God. I, I'd have been lucky to but, read a chapter. But you, 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 you exploded in your growth. God did that for me. And, and I believe that God is going to do that in this hour. If we'll yield to the time of preparation of this purification, my God is able to bring you where he needs you to be. 
That's right. He has brought you into the kingdom for such yeah, a time as this, talking it. about Esther. And if we'll yield to the preparation time, he'll put the gifts and the growth in your hands, which may mean that for a while you may need to turn off Babylon and tell them what they can do with all their programming mm-hmm. and and just concentrate on these are the things that I'm going to do. All of a sudden you have new priorities that you give your time to. And when you do, God's going to accelerate you. Yeah, I, well, I believe that. I believe that he's, well, it's it's that time of, restoring things yes repairing you know restoring the years the locust ate and stuff because that's what i felt like i felt like something was just eating eating everything in my life yeah, quicker than i could try to bring word, yeah. it in and so god just man he just made a restoration and then after that after that it was about eight months is what i had and then it all hit again and that's when i had to come to grips with the fact that Okay, somebody's done something to me. I'm in a mess. All these other people around me are in a mess, and I've never seen it. And so then I had to start working on me. And, you know, in, in that process, God told you, okay, I've taught you what to do. Mm-hmm, now did. stand up in the authority That's that it. you just learned. That's it. And I put on combat boots. And, and see, the, the great thing about that is, okay, God said, okay, the enemy's getting ready to come here at point C. So while you're at point B, I'm going to give you everything that you need. So when you're at point B, you can go ahead and blow the enemy out of the water. You just need to learn to stand in your authority that you have in Yeah, and, and I mean, it felt like I went back further than when I started. When I woke up that day, um, I felt like the depression was worse than it had ever been. And, and I mean, I had a decision to make. I, I was either going to stand up and fight or I was going to fall in a deeper pit than I was before. So I thought, okay, let's go. And, yeah. and I even look at that. I, I look at how uh, Satan was able to use the other believers to make sure you're in that position because of different things that happen. I mean, the, the enemy, it, there's, there's, there's one truth that I have found. Then uh, and you, you see end time prophecy preachers talk about the matrix. Anybody who's still plugged into Babylon can become an agent. Mm-hmm. Wittingly or unwittingly, they can become an agent. That's why in the purification process, we get to the place where the devil can no longer use us and only God is using us for his purposes. That's what that. heaven wants. That, I, I, that. I think that's, that's what heaven rejoices. And I want to share one funny thing before we, we quit today. Uh, I, was on, I was on the um, back porch with my pup, and she loves it when she can see a squirrel or a rabbit out there. I mean, <laughs> she does. And, and there was the fattest squirrel I had ever seen. I mean, he, he looked like he'd been eating dog food for a while. He was a big old tubby thing. And she was playing in the back room, and I kept on trying to call her because she'll get up on top of the, of the couch we have there, faces the, the back of it against the window. She'll look up there and, and look at things. And I kept on trying to get her. I, I, I literally picked her up, carried her, put her on the couch, put her up there where she could see, and she was more interested in getting down and stuff. And, and I worked with her, worked with her, worked with her, and finally she saw it. And what went through my mind was, oh, she's so cute when she finally saw what, what I was trying to get to her. Mary in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see God standing. He was sitting there. There was an angel next to him. And, and you look down and you see me and I'm opening up the Bible. I'm getting excited about something. And God says, isn't he so cute? He finally saw what I've been trying to show him for the last six months. <laughs> I think we're all there at times. I think I we're all there at times. And so, you know, God's working. He's, he he's, he's working. Don't let the things of Babylon distract you from what heaven's trying to show you. No, and don't be discouraged because no. I, I could feel it. Like December and January have been no telling Very what's impressive. launched against all of, of God's remnant to discourage them. But let me tell you, there's a reason for that because Satan has got some kind of insight into what God's getting ready to do, and he's going to say, i got to stop it. Yes. You know, one of the things that I, I look back in my life – and hurtful events and horrible things that I consciously remember, almost everyone was connected to Freemasonry. Yes. So I've looked back at that and thought, you know, that old devil had some kind of insight that I was going to try to to make a way for people to get free from that. Yes. And so he, he took those in that bondage and said, do this, say this, move over here. I, I mean, it was just... It was unbelievable when I, I yeah. kind of backtracked it. But don't don't be discouraged because God can change. Did you know God could change your life in 24 hours? He changed mine in 24 hours. Yes. He, 24 he hours. is the God of the breakthrough. Don't forget I'm that. I'm telling you. He is the breaker. He is. He is. And Jesus came to destroy the works of wickedness. And I can tell you the blood of Jesus is, is just as powerful today 
as it was when he shed yeah. it. His name is just as powerful as it's ever been. And he, we're going to see victory. We're just, we're just in a rough patch trying to get there. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I don't care how high the walls are the enemy built around you. Like he thinks he has you pinned in. Mm-hmm. There is not a wall big enough that Jesus can't make a hole through. That's right. Be like Jericho. That's all right. All down to the ground. Well, Father, we thank you today for the remnant. Father, we ask that you would loose an anointing. Father, for purification. Yes. Bunker busting, Father. Father, I believe that you're raising up a generation of men and women, Father, that are going to align themselves with your throne, your word, and your commandments, your purposes in the earth. And Father, they're going to be found worthy to walk in the supernatural power of God, just like Jesus did, to prove the kingdom of God and the Messiahship of Jesus. In the darkest time the world has ever seen, they're going to be a great light. Father, use your people. Yes. Father, you know exactly where every one of us are, and you know exactly where we need to be. And Father, right now, we give you permission to take us out of the miry clay and to bring us where we need to be and set us on the firm foundation of your word. And Father, we thank you, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.